Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sales Velocity TV. I think this is number 41, Aaron, and I, I, I just want to check in with the audience, and I want to make sure we're living up to the two incredibly entertaining gentlemen um, status that we are so positioned, that we're so well positioned with when we kick off the show. Um, I hope we're living up to it because really we have a lot of fun with the show, but we're, we're I think, on episode 41, which is uh, interesting. We are highly rated as one of the top sales and business growth shows in the I guess the podcast universe. So that's exciting for us. I see the numbers coming in every single week, which is pretty cool. And we got a great one today on authority marketing secrets. Aaron, how are you? It's Friday, man. I'm stoked. It's, I know it's been the same way for you. It's been a, a crazy busy week. Uh, met tons of amazing new people, uh, forged a ton of great new relationships. Uh, excited to, to go in the weekend. As you know, we had a hurricane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, week. yeah. Saw that. That was a bit. That was. I mean, that was interesting. You go back to the Stone Ages for you know. 24 you guys had hours. no power for how long a day? Twenty four hours. Yeah, we had no power for about thirty hours, and uh, tons of trees blown down. A little yeah. bit of structural damage, you know, here on the island. Um, but it's amazing, in in both a positive and a negative way, to see how interconnected we all are. Like the moment we didn't have power and phones couldn't get charged, my kids were losing their mind. <laughs> losing their mind. When they did not have their phone and it was not happening. It's it, so concerning it, on so many world, levels, man. The world had ended. It's so concerning world. on so many levels. I mean, you, you're down, even if you were like being down for two or three hours, you were down a day and people are like freaking. Losing their mind. Right. Right. If we have a power yeah. out, if we if we like have a have a, a God forbid we have some sort of a war or some sort of a bad storm that knocks down the power grid or God forbid there's a terrorist attack. I mean, people aren't even going to know how to function. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like I mean, literally, like on day two, they're going to just like crumble. They're going to melt. And I remember, like when I was a kid, and I'm sure you were the same way. Like if a storm like this happened, I would have been on my bike checking it out, exploring everything yeah. gone. I would have been gone. My parents would have, you know, wouldn't see me for 20 hours. And, you know, it's just a different generation now. I mean, they explore through their phones, through their tablets, through yeah. their, their connections. And I just kind of looked at it and went kind of cool, kind of sad, to be honest. Kind of cool, kind of sad. Listen, as parents, we have to battle this. I had, it took my son the other day before we get into the show. He, um, I had, he had like an eye exam, like a checkup eye exam. His eyes were kind of flickering a little bit, so we, I want to have an eye exam. Everything checked out good, but she said, listen, any kids today, they're on their devices so much and their eyes are still developing. The retinas of their eyes are still developing that you got to be conscious of making sure if they're on devices, tablets, or computers, that they, they, every 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you set a timer and take their eyes off of it. Get them outside, move around, walk around, because if they stay on it for hours and hours at a time, it's actually called, it, it, there, there's degradation happening to these young kids' eyes. And it's causing more and more kids to need glasses because they're straining so much under these blue lights. By the way, one of the reasons I wear the yellow, the yellow glasses are blue blocker light lenses. They're not real glasses, but I'm under a lot of lights when we do the show. I probably do sometimes six or seven zooms a day and I need to be on. And after time, my eyes start to feel it. And these things help tremendously. So we all have to be conscious of how we take care of our eyes with all these screens today. It's, it's crazy. You're right. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're going to do a show. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, talking, we're talking, talking about authority marketing, which is a lot of time in front of a screen. So yeah, like it is. Said, it is. We're cool. going to go for about three hours here cool. today. So, so, you know, buckle in, sit tight. we got a three-hour seminar ahead of us here. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we got, I got these, these five pillars I want to share with you, we'll share with you. And when we talk about authority marketing, we're talking about positioning you, your business, and your brand in a light where you are – kind of invalidating all other choices you're so far ahead you're so far ahead of the game right you're you're the the obvious mercedes benz choice for your audience and we want to talk about how you do that today because you need to play in a lot of different forms of media to do that and there's five that we're going to cover here today the first one is how do you show up in social media we'll talk about that second one is what kind of publishing media are you doing shows podcasts things like that 
Uh, email and SMS media, list building and communicating with your list where they are most, right? Email and phone. Live event media, which is making a massive comeback as we all right, all know right now. And then joint venture media. How are you, how are you linking up and partner up with other leaders, with other thought leaders that may have your customers as well? Those are the big five. Let's dig in and talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room first, Aaron, which is social media. Still, and we've done shows on this in the past. You can go to salesvelocitytv.com and go back and see all the different social media type topic shows. We have a ton of experience in this area. We advise clients in this area quite a bit. There's a way to do social media and a way not to do social media. It's really important that you separate it personal from business, personal from public figure, right? If you look at like an Instagram page as an example, you can have a traditional Instagram account or a public figure account. Same with Facebook. You can have a traditional personal Facebook page or what's called a business fan page. You really need to make that divide first. We can start there and then we'll talk about what kind of content, how do I need to show up in social media? Because you are being, tell me if this is correct English here. It might be new English. You are being social media today more than you are being Googled today. Is that, has that verb made it yet? Okay, how about you? You're being Facebooked and Instagrammed and YouTubed today more so than you're being Googled today. So you better be there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Close. I think, I think that's a great All one right. to start with, and and I think you have to remove some of the the misconceptions or the fears around social media that most people have. Right? Is yeah. Is most businesses know they're supposed to be on it, they just don't know what they're supposed to say. How do they show up? Right. How do they show up? How often? Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. And I just had a group um, that you know we had an eight week coaching program, and we talked about a lot of very high level stuff. And at the end of it, we asked them like, what was the most impactful, you know, module that they went through? And almost to a T, it was that I needed to be more consistent in social. I needed to be more consistent in my message in social. Um, I needed to more, be more consistent in my posting, right? And as a result, the majority of the people did that and their leads and their sales went through the roof. And it, it, and it wasn't, they weren't surprised that their leads and their sales went through the roof. They were almost surprised how long they put it off for. Ah, interesting. They felt embarrassed, I think. But uh, embarrassed by just not being visible on social for as long as they doing, had, really? Just not doing it, right? And like anything, you know, we challenged them to schedule it, you know, into their calendar, make it part of their, you know, productivity, right? Don't leave it up to when you feel like it, leaving it to chance, so on and so forth. And, and this, this group that I'm talking about, you know, individually is that they are all personal trainers, right? right. Yep. And so they just got in that habit of consistently posting valuable content. And obviously if you're a personal trainer, you're, you're posting, in, you're in, you're in kind of a demonstration business. You better be yeah. on social, right? And there, I, I, t I showed them, you know, what you and I, you know, understand about content mapping and creating the right content and making sure that they've got their seed language and all their stuff. And, mm -hmm their USP and, and a call to action and everything and just being, you know, consistently giving value and, and letting people know what they do and who they work with and how they can, you know, be, you know, be reached, you know, what's the next step. And all they had to do was consistently do one to, in some cases, two per day. Right. And they all found to, to a T that just being consistent and not worrying so much about whether it was perfect or whether it was, you know, worrying about what people were saying, you know, kind of feedback they got, except just, just being consistent around their message, their brand, their USP, all of a sudden leads and sales, you know, in many cases for these people doubled or even tripled, right? Just so by being more visible on social, just, just by being more out there and having a strategy and being yeah. seen, they just felt it, like they had more deal flow. I think there's, and I think that the challenge with social media is that people are like, oh, I don't, you know, in many cases, I don't like social media. I don't want to be on it's social media. It's definitely a love hate thing. Let's, let's be real, right? People right. have and a love hate thing going on with social media. I think it's exactly. Right. And, and, and my point to them is, is always look, business is a game of eyeballs and credibility. I don't care where you get the eyeballs and the credibility from, but the more eyeballs you have and the more credibility you can gain, the faster your business can grow and the more money you're going to make. So look at these different types of media that we're talking about today. 
t- remove your personal opinion mm. away from social media. Remove your political view of the different channels, how they handle things, whatever. Re- remove your your ageism beliefs around the different ch- all the things that you've got wrapped up in your head, and just substitute it with more eyeballs, more credibility. That's it's it's a simple. Shift. Or I'll, I'll take it one step further, Aaron. Or use the platforms the same way the owners of the platform use them. They're nothing but right. massive advertising engines. Do you think Facebook right. is there to create a lovey-dovey atmosphere for all of you to hang out with and connect with your college buddies? Nope. They're there to get as many eyeballs as they can into one ecosystem so they can sell a billion dollars a week in advertising. Correct. Don't be fooled. But, hey, here's the deal. Play the game. What, what's the saying? Don't hate the player? Hate the ga- don't, don't hate the player. Hate the game? Right. I mean, play the game. Play you the should game. be using social media for business purposes. You're welcome right. to hang out and have conversations with friends and connect with people from high school. Certainly there's that element of it. But if you can find a way to crack, this is TV media today, by the way. What right. TV was when we grew up in the 80s is social media today. It's essentially TV. Right. It's the number one place to advertise if you can make it work. Most people can't make it work. We've done episodes on that as well. But the first step is being there. And how do you be there on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and wherever else? Those are the big three. How do you be there organically first? We can always dovetail later. We did it last week, actually. We talked about the advertising side of things and the paid media side of things and and the changes with iOS. By the way, that's a great episode to watch. I think it was traffic and conversion um, that we did last week. There's been a lot of changes on the paid media side of things, but we're talking all organic today. How do you show up, perform, and produce content? And, and, and we've got a, uh, I think you, you know him as well, because I think he's a, he's a member of Pipe. You know, got this personal trainer. He's got a very specific demographic. You know, it's guys about 40 to 50 years old that want to be in some type of uh, competition, you know, like those bodybuilding competitions, you know. So he knows exactly who his niche is. And a couple times a day, does a two minute video, gives a little, little tip. Mm hmm on how you can accomplish that, right? He puts in his seed language. I work with guys in their early 40s who, you know, wanna wanna succeed in their first or second competition, right? And if you wanna work with me and and achieve these goals, you know, send me a direct message. Like it's it's a very simple process, right? It's value. It's almost like like a mini info commercial, giving value, teaching, and then, hey, by the way, here's how to get in touch with me. Here's the kind of person I work with. It's, It's textbook. Yeah, and this is a young guy, super nice guy, kind of shy, to be honest. I think it's, it's taken a lot for him to overcome to be consistent with it over the last year. Right. You know, this is this one-man operation making $60,000 a month in personal training. Very cool. I mean, think about it. Can you imagine when you were – I think you were a personal trainer way back then. Was when I was 19, yeah. When you were 19. My first business, yeah. Can you imagine if I'd said to you at 19 years old, you're going to make $60,000 a month as a personal trainer? You would have said – not at that point, old man, I would just want to make that in a year. That was 25 right. years ago, right? Yeah. And he works from home and goes to the gym and shoots some videos at home, shoots some videos in the gym. That's it. No overhead, you know? And, and he does no paid media. It's a 100% organic. organic following that he's consistent and persistent at over the course of a year. It's just eyeballs and credibility. That's all it is. Yep. Agreed. So think about for you and your business, what is, and I like, I like the, the path of least resistance when, when someone's not doing this, right? And that is maybe it's a tip a week. A lot of times sure. when I'm getting somebody to go organic on social media, I say, just produce one thing a week. And normally it's something in video or it's written first and then they do a video about what they wrote. We've talked about this in previous shows. And just get in the habit of doing that one thing a week. It's almost like having a weekly e-newsletter, but make it, Make it media driven. So if it's video, it can be used on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It can be caught up. It can be transcribed. It can be converted to a PDF. So video is always the way to go because it's top of the totem pole. And you can always chunk video down into written reports, audios. For example, we'll take this whole show today. Our production team will strip out the audio. And this becomes the radio podcast version of Sales Velocity TV. But we start with video. So I think it's really important that if you have a hang up with video, get over it quick. Or get someone to do it for you and with you. Video works very well, by the way, like we're doing right now. We feed off each other. So if you can get in an interview-like format or if you can partner with someone or do things with someone. I have another client I can think of that's doing a show. Uh, a show. You remember Troy. Troy's, I sent you a, yeah. a link. Troy's doing a show. He's a financial planner with another financial planner. I think they're calling it you know, 
two guys whining about retirement and they got a bottle of wine, whining, W-I-N-E, whining, and they have, they're have they drinking wine while they're doing the show. It's super cool, but it's fun. It's entertaining. And now they know, dude, right? I said, guys, just a show a week and that thing can multiply. It's a spider web effect. That one show per week can be cut up for social media. It can be used on all your platforms. It gets people on, to know you, like blog, you, and trust you. Blog posts. blog posts, transcribed, PDFs, show notes, I mean... The list goes on, which takes us perfectly into pillar number two, which is publishing, which leads back to social media. So if you're kind of like, well, I really don't know what to do on social media and how to present myself or my business. Well, you need to start publishing something. Number two here, publishing media. What do we mean? This is a publishing asset, Sales Velocity TV. We do it live on Friday mornings in our Facebook group, social media, video at the same time happening. See, there's a couple of things happening. It then becomes a YouTube video, of course. It then gets stripped out. Audio goes to about nine different podcast channels, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, all the big ones, right? It then gets show notes written. Our team will then take out the, the, the highlights of this. And we have a website for the show where you can download all the shows, watch all the shows, see the video of the shows, and download it onto your favorite podcast platform. And it becomes a what I call a spider web effect. It then gets cut up into little chunks for social media. So there's little two and three minute tidbits out there saying, hey, here's a quick clip from the show where they talked about authority marketing. If you want to see more, go here. And what happens is this becomes a perpetuating cycle of content that you have all over the place and you start to become omnipresent in your space. And doing a show, and it's easy to do a podcast if you don't want to go the video route, it's very easy to talk. Anybody can produce audio, right? You yeah. got to have some sort of venue, Anchor. outlet, show, podcast that you have today because it's so easy to do and it gives you so many assets that you can have multiplied. And that's the publishing piece that I think a lot of people get hung up on too because they say, well, I don't know where to begin. How could I have a show like you guys? Or what would I say on my podcast? How will I come up with something every week? Like there's all those, what do we call all those? We call it Jim Rohn or, or Zig Ziglar. All that stinking thinking, he calls it. All that stinking thinking comes in. You find all the reasons why not versus all the reasons why you should, which we're talking about today. Yeah, and I think that another thing that kind of hangs people up when we talk about this is that, one, they're worried about what they're going to say, and two, they're worried that they have to show up in some manner that other people, you know, would expect, right? And, and it's actually the reverse. The more you can just be yourself, Right. And the more authentic you can be with your own voice and your own knowledge, the better it actually is, because it, it attracts people who resonate with your beliefs, you know, how you speak, all the different things. And, and, and it repels the people who don't resonate mm -hmm. with what you believe. It's, it's creating that, you know, it's the Seth Godin creating the tribe mentality or the Simon Sinek, you know. Uh, people, you know, you yeah, want to do this yeah. to people who believe what you some believe. People will jive with your philosophy. Some won't. Right. And, and, and so the goal is not to try and be something, conjure something for other people. The goal is to just be yourself and be authentic and share your opinions and your thoughts and your, and your beliefs and your goals and, you know, your experience in your particular niche and have fun with it. Have fun with it. And, and the people that, that will resonate will resonate. The people that won't, won't. And it doesn't matter. But listen, the content thing as far as what do I say, I don't know, you know, how will I come up with something every week? There's no shortage of information today and ideas today. This just takes some sitting down and thinking about it. A couple ideas on how to do that. I know some people that do content that shoot four shows at one time. Let's say they have a podcast yeah. or a video show like ours. They'll have a video person or a producing company come in or they'll do it themselves and they'll say, you know what, I'm going to allocate a day a month to publishing. And in yeah. that one day a month, I'm going to have four episodes and then I'm going to release them once a week and then have them all cut up and chopped up. And, you know, you can find virtual assistants to do that stuff for you every day of the week and twice on Sunday. It's so easy to find the people to do all that stuff for you. Don't let the tech stand in your way either. But, but map out the content. What would be four good pieces of content that would provide great value to your audience that would perfectly lead to your product and service as the solution? That's the key. Right. This has to. Be, this is not done for ego purposes. It's done for business purposes. Right. It's nice to see. Of, it's nice to see all your stuff out there. It's cool, but it better lead to something. I actually had this conversation with a client the other day. I'm like, you know, your show is awesome, but you haven't told anybody to do anything at the end. This isn't for fun. 
You're not getting paid to do this. Where is the call to action? Where is the next step? Where is the link to the website? Where is the go download my free report? Where is the go to this website to learn more about how I can help you and you can book a call with me? To Where is that? Because if that's not there, I'm canceling the show for you, right? <laughs> so that's key is there has to be a next step. Agreed, 100%. Let's talk about the third pillar. Third pillar is email in SMS media, which means along the way, you best be building a list, a customer list and or a prospect list. So if you're doing, hopefully you're going to do lead gen from your content and lead gen from a show, a publishing piece, right? Which would be somebody going and getting a free report, signing up for a webinar. Those are kind of the two biggies today. Seeing a demo, signing up for a challenge, taking a survey. If you're not capturing data every single day, hour, minute of the week, you're kidding yourself because that is the path to a very big business that you can scale is the building of a list that precedes the selling. Rarely are you just going to go make rogue sales without building a list. Rarely. We could pull it off, but we've been doing this for collectively 35, 40 plus years. But somebody who's getting started online, you've got to be doing list building. Best if you can be doing email and SMS list building, which means you're acquiring names, emails, and I guess bonus would be mobile phone numbers so that you can do SMS text. That's the key. Yeah. And I think that, again, it still surprises me, but I think so many people underestimate the value of a list. Oh, right? they do. They do because social media gets in the way. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I, like you have to do social. It's not a, it's not a, you know, if or scenario, you have to do them all. You got to do them all. Right. But you know, we have a client, as you know, Andrew, that, that is in the financial education space and probably about six months ago now, um, there was a, a public company that was, that was doing a private placement offer. And, you know, they said, Hey, do you think, you know, maybe your list might be interested in this and so on and so forth. And they said, yeah, let's, let's, let's send out the an email, see if people want to invest in this. It was, it's a mining company, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they sent three emails out. And they raised $123 million really? in three days, three days, right? They had no idea that their, their, their own email list, they're great at capturing emails. They had no idea how valuable that list was. They, they, they actually had to restructure their business because of this newfound knowledge of what they could do. The power of the email list. Yeah. I mean, you and I have, a, you know, we have a really good personal friend that, you know, was sick for a couple of years and. He had to live off his email list. He still made a million dollars a year living off his email list, right? Just sending out an email a couple times a week. I mean, it is such sometimes a with an offer, ask. sometimes just value, right? Good balance. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, it, it, people really underestimate. A lot of people, I think they, in their mind, they're like, "Well, isn't email dead now? Like nobody really e reads their their email as much as they used to." Yeah, you're right. People read less of their emails it, than yeah. they used, to, but right? but not All dead. Time. Just a bad. little bit more fragmented, but not dead, which means right. you need to be a little bit better, better subject lines, different reasons why you're showing up, better sure. with compliance and can spam deliverability. Like you have to play the game a little bit more compliantly now, and then you'll show up much different than everybody else who just wants to blast stuff out for no reason, right? Yeah, Having a weekly e-newsletter is, is to me, there's almost no business that shouldn't have a weekly e-newsletter at bare minimum weekly communication once a week, bare minimum. Don't even start with the monthly. You're, you're completely lost in email. If you're waiting a month to communicate with your customers by email, you may as well just hang it up right now because they're going to forget about you in like 10 days. Forget a month. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the, the, the point that I was kind of circling around to was that people love to make excuses to not do the thing, right? Well, you know, people aren't really watching TV anymore. They're on YouTube. So probably, what, I, what I meant earlier about finding reasons why not instead of reasons why. Yeah, maybe I, should, I should, TV is a dying thing. I shouldn't be in it. Yet the most expensive commercials on the planet are still the Super Bowl. That's the most expensive advertising, yep, right? It's yep. the most eyeballs watching one thing at one time every single year without fail, right? Or, you know, I don't think I should do email. People aren't about there's people doing hundreds of millions of dollars a year strictly through email, right? Or maybe I shouldn't do text because blah, blah, blah. Somebody might not like my text, right? The, the answer Throw is- Throw in another subscribe link and get over it. Right. The answer isn't, or the question isn't which one should you do? The question is, why aren't you doing all of them? Right? Shock why all, aren't right? you doing all of them? 
Shock and awe, multimedia, omnipresent. Correct. So email SMS, right? Now SMS is a little, it, it, mobile phones are a little harder to get. So in your lead generation efforts, they might be a little harder to get. I've had good success with on an opt-in form. We say mobile phone number optional. And mm -hmm. sometimes that disarms people enough where they actually give it. And I would also yeah. use language like we'll send this to you by text. People like getting things by text today more so than email. So if you were doing a free report, you might say in a, in a funnel or a lead gen or a landing page, you might say first name, email, and mobile phone number in parentheses, we will text you the report or we will text you the, t right. the start time. And people go, oh, that's cool, I'll get a text, right? And you might say something in your unsubscribe, you can unsubscribe from any emails and any text at any time, no problem, no questions asked. We have yep. great success with that too. I've never gotten into things that say, we will never spam you, we will never rent you, we will never, why would you even put that in someone's head, Mike? I don't wanna hear the word spam or rent my name. Just tell them they can unsubscribe anytime they want, no problem, it's fine, right? Yep. That stuff is so critical, different topic for a different day. But this third pillar, email and mobile phone number list building is the asset in the business. This is the thing you own. You don't own social media. They can kick you off anytime. We know firsthand. You say the wrong thing today, you're gone. God forbid you have an opinion that's not in the, that doesn't jive with the owners of Twitter, right? That's right. Like you could be gone anytime today. Or, or I'm looking at a, at, a, at a company yesterday that somebody's pitching me on getting involved with. A hundred percent of their sales are done through Amazon. They do seven million dollars a Amazon year. Amazon can pull the plug anytime. A Amazon has already been caught stealing the most successful products, making their own brand, and putting their brand above the company that was successful. And the owners of, of Facebook and Twitter have been called to Capitol Hill, caught with their hands in the cookie jar. Fact: They didn't get called for lunch. They got called to Capitol Hill because they're censoring information and deciding what people see. Fact. So you don't, you got to play nice there. You don't own those platforms. You could get kicked off a podcast platform. Facebook sure. may not like sales velocity TV tomorrow and we're gone, but you know what we own? Our customer list and our prospect list that is an email and an SMS text list that lives in our platform pipeline pro, which powers the show which is why you got to have a list in a CRM because that's the asset. If you ever watch Shark Tank, you know what they're going to say? How big is your customer list? How big is your email list? How big is your physical? We have a huge physical list too, right? If you have physical addresses, even more of it. You're even more valuable if you have a physical mailing list in addition to an email list. So the list building piece is at the center here. It's got to be done. The fourth one, huge, making a comeback. It's been a little dead for years, live event media workshops, masterminds, live events, conferences. If you live in the state of Florida where I live, they actually let you have them. So pretty much everybody comes here, the national championship, the Super Bowl, concerts, events. I mean, it's like crazy, 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 all the events that have happened in the last six months or so in Florida. That's all coming back pretty much everywhere though, because I think people are, are okay with the risk reward of traveling and going to events and, and whatnot. So that's big. Do you have a live event or a workshop for your business? Yeah, and and, and if you don't, clients, you need one. One of our mutual clients, Andrew, is is stoked to be getting back to live events, right? And that was a big part of his model pre-COVID. And that yeah, it's great to be in digital. Yeah, it's great to be in TV. It's great to be in radio. It's great to be in email. It's great to be all these things that we're talking about. Yep. But you will never have a higher sales conversion, a higher dollar per lead, a higher dollar per unit than in a live event. True. End of statement. Yep. When somebody gets to meet you, see you, breathe the same air, you know, shake your hand, ask you questions in person, feel your vibe, all those things, you will never have a higher engagement, higher sales conversion than in some Awesome for selling, even better for retention, for people hanging around, coming around. People yeah. love having a place to go. I mean, we're getting ready 2022. We put our first annual conference on the calendar and we say annual because it's going to happen every year, maybe even twice a year. People yeah. like getting in, getting around people, connecting and networking with like-minded people on a regular basis. I mean, I, you know, Aaron, you were in, in Miami at my office last week. I've been running a private mastermind group with seven to eight multi-million dollar business owners for 10 straight years, I took two months off during the pandemic, two, not 15, not 12, two, we missed two months. We've never missed a month of spending a day together, disconnected from the business, meeting about what's working, what's not working, where I'm hung up, where I'm not hung up, 
where my personal, personal, professional, all ways to work on the business, not in the business. I've been running those kind of venues now, like I said, for a decade plus. And it is really, really important because people love to get around, especially more so today than ever. We're like itching to get more live and in more of those environments. So, so find that media. It's all media. Find that media for your business. What live event, workshop, conference can you put on the calendar to bring people together to obviously get them to be more open to buying more stuff and ultimately becoming bigger, better, longer term clients? It's, it's, it's just math on the live event thing. It's, it's, it's so simple. And the fifth one is joint ventures, which I think is the most underutilized of them all. This was one that you can probably talk more about, but linking up affiliate joint ventures, strategic alliances, they all have different terms, figuring out ways to connect with people who maybe share the same customers as you, because we can't convert everybody. Yeah. And this is, I went in depth with, with a group yesterday on this. It is the most underutilized free, free. strategy on the planet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Number one, do you do you even have a referral program for your customers? It's I mean, it is the most simple thing. Hey, if you refer us a customer, I'll give you a hundred bucks or I'll give you 10 percent off or I'll get I'll send you a gift card. It doesn't even matter what it is. Do you have one? And have you told your customers that it exists? OK, that's question number one. That's the easiest thing on Earth. If people had a great experience with your business, they want to send you people. But if you don't tell them that you want them to send you people, if you don't keep it in front of their face and if you don't give them some type of incentive, right? Because energy goes where money flows, mm. right? They won't do it, right? So you have to have one and then you have to consistently tell them that you have one and ask them if they have anybody that, that they want to send your way. And they will be glad to do it, happy to do it. And, Trust on, top, and on top of that, it's usually a pretty nice revenue stream for people as well. We have Agreed. people coming to us pretty much in the dozens a week going, can I join the Pipeline Pro affiliate program? I love the software that you guys run so much that I want to be able to refer it to people. And since there's a 30% residual recurring income every month on using the software, it's like, that's, I mean, that, that stacks up, right? Yeah. So if you become an affiliate or you make your product an affiliatized product or referral based product, you're going to get a lot of deals that you never would have got because other people know other people who know other people. And that becomes pretty powerful. That becomes a multiplication effect also. So referral programs, affiliate programs, the, figure the, out a way to have one. That's the, that's the small, easy thing to do today that yeah. everybody overlooks. Everybody forgets. It's, it's very inconsistent. The second thing is the, is sort of the, the bigger, the bigger reach, right? Which is starting to think about, other businesses that you know or people that you know that have synergistic customer overlap, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a real life example, right? You know, Andrew and I own Pipe Together and I'm also the CEO of a, a marketing agency, right? I know a guy who teaches, he's, he is the highest rated teacher, you know, Andrew as well. He's the highest rated teacher for selling coaching programs online. All he does is, is coach salespeople to be good on Zoom. That's his whole business. And then he staffs other companies with those salespeople, right? So here's a guy who has this massive sales organization. What are the chances that those salespeople are going to be working in a company who could use my marketing services, right? Very, very, very high. They're very high. There's a lot of overlap there. So I reached out to him. We had a conversation. I said, Hey, I would love to, to, you know, set up a joint venture with you and, and, you know, make you part of my referral program and I'll pay you, you know, a good chunk of money. If you send anybody there, that one guy, he was like, yeah, absolutely. Let me test you out. All of a sudden he realized we were really good at what we did, which makes his life, you know, easier with his business because he has the salespeople, right? He sent me about $400,000 in business this year. That one relationship, right? Because, I thought about it for a second. I said, where would there be overlap? Where could I offer value? I did a little mini training for his group. I, I, I set up an agreement with him and I follow up with him once every two weeks, right? There's hundreds of these types of businesses all over the world in your niche, whatever niche you're in, 
And you might be saying to yourself, well, I can't think of any right now. That's because you're lazy and you haven't taken five minutes to actually do some work. It's the same okay? conversation as you can find content to take the time to do the work to organize the content. Same thing. Take the time to do the work to find the joint ventures. Sure. Joint ventures can They're come there. from other companies, physical, digital, Facebook groups, email lists, SMSs. I don't care. Your, your local chamber of commerce. I don't care. There's a million of them. Stop being lazy. Go establish the relationships and have, you know, 20 of these. Mutually like, beneficial relationships where you can feed business back and forth and share in the money. Right. I'm, I'm thinking as you're talking, Aaron, I'm thinking about we, we have a, we have about three. I call it strategic alliances, but it's still it's joint venture. Right. Yeah. We have three joint venture vendors that I think that I'm thinking about right now that bring their services to the table that we make available to all of our members. And in turn, we make a huge chunk of money every month from the services that they sell to our members, which which we vet very closely. We don't we, we bring the right complementary partners into our ecosystem that can help and add value. And boy, oh boy, it's a win-win all around. It's a win for them. It's a win for us. It's a win for, so you, you're, you're creating usually a, a, a trifecta win, right? Yeah. Win for you, win for your customers and win for the, the person you're sending the business to or vice versa. Huge and all free. This is all just being a, a connector and a networker and a, and a politician and just having conversations. That's what that's about. And I want to give everybody one really important tip if you're going to go down this road that I had to learn on my own, right? You're going to have so many people that you meet that want to help you because as humans, most humans want to help other humans, right? And what they'll say to you is, I'm happy to send people if I find somebody that's a good fit for you. You don't need to pay me anything. Okay. Wrong, 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 wrong. I tell every single person who says it to me, I don't care what you say. I'm sending you a referral agreement and I'm sending you money. When you say, I don't, I honestly, bro, I don't need it. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And I signed them up and all of a sudden they send me one person and I send them cash and it's all of a sudden like it became ten more, 10 more behind it. Right. It, the moment you send somebody cash, watch how many more they send you. I agree. They send you one person and they don't get any cash. It's just one of those things that they're never thinking about that blah, 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 blah. I can't get cash fast enough into these people's hands the moment they say very it. smart sudden, on your end to do that because most people don't formalize it like that and they should right absolutely i'm spend i spend on average in one of my companies right now about thirty thousand dollars a month in referral fees but 30, it's money you wouldn't have had as you know correct so and you're just, glad to just send just it because the top That's line money you wouldn't have had it's just it's just part of my ad budget yeah Right? Instead of having to allocate it to TV or YouTube or whatever, I'm just allocating it to another form of media. And that's the purpose of today's conversation is we're talking about these different – you're leveraging other people's audiences. Mm -hmm. That gives you instant authority in that group that you didn't otherwise have. Right. So make a list of the top 20 you know, synergistic businesses that you could – partner with, reach out to them, have the conversation. N nobody doesn't want free money, right? Like, it's not like it's a difficult conversation. God, could, could we maybe do something together and I could send you some free money? Okay. Sounds the key, good. The key is finding the congruency, right? Finding the industries, the people who sell to your people, vice versa. You have to think about this too, right? What are some congruencies? What would be a, so here's a good question to leave you with. What would be a good product or service that I could add to my offerings that I don't fulfill, that I bring someone in to fulfill. That's the key here is no work. And I could, and I could make money selling it to my customers and then the vendor would make money as well and the client would get great value. So there's also a play here for if you need to develop other products and services, don't think you need to be the developer and the fulfiller of all the products and services. Bring in a vendor, call it a joint venture, partner with somebody and provide an additional complimentary product and service to your customers or clients. And it's another income stream for you. And it's another value add for them. And that's yeah, a great a way to be thinking about new revenue streams also. Yeah. We have a ton of financial education uh, or financial products and insurance products. Uh, we have a lot of those, those members inside of pipeline pro, right? Yeah. Financial advisors, insurance guys, right. accountants. Yeah. 
it makes perfect sense if you're one of those people to connect with one of those other people to introduce a joint venture, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm selling financial products, they probably need to talk about insurance. If I'm selling insurance, they probably need to talk about financial products. You connect with each other, you establish a, a process and a, and a joint venture, and all of a sudden, boom, you're just giving the customer what they want instead of them having to go search somewhere else and it's free money. It's so overlooked and it's free yep. and it's powerful. The I'll leave with this. The biggest, the most successful joint venture we have in play right now was when we brought a virtual assistant agency into our Pipeline Pro community so that yeah. every one of our Pipeline Pro members who might want a second set of eyes on their technology and on their CRM, and maybe they want help with funnels or campaigns or setting up web pages, we bring trained and vetted virtual assistants to the table and make them available to our members. And obviously we make a little bit, of, we, make, we make a small piece of what they pay. It's not a ton of money, but it's a huge value add to our members. It's another business model within the business model. And you need to be thinking about building a portfolio of offerings for your business. That is the key. It can't just be buy or die with your product and service. It has to be what else can I bring to the table that I don't always have to create and fulfill. That's joint ventures. So you can yep. get real creative and go down a lot of different roads when it comes to joint ventures. And that's number five. So wrapping up here, the big five authority marketing pillars, we call them social media. How do you show up and play? Publishing media, having a show like this, a podcast, whatever, you got to be producing content, right? And that loops back to social media, email and SMS media. If you're not list building, if you're not continuing to add new emails, new names and new mobile phone numbers, bonus new physical addresses to your CRM and to your database, you're in trouble. The fourth one, live event media, they're back. Got to have one, got to get people live. And obviously the JV joint venture media. I mean, that's a mouthful. Might be worth listening again, but if you have all five of those pillars working and someone's working on that with you, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big game changer and a lot of businesses don't have anywhere near those five in play. So that gives nope. you a huge edge. Absolutely. And, and, if you, and I know from experience, and, and so do you, Andrew, if you're running those five things successfully, you're seven, eight figures, no problem. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah, if you have if you have consistency, volume, presence around those five, I mean, you have so much happening that you're probably going to need. If you don't already have a big staff, you'll need a bigger staff. You'll need people to run the divisions. I mean, you could take these five pillars and you could argue that they're verticals within your company because they are. And you could you could even argue that someone's running each of these verticals. Someone's running my live events. Someone's handling my joint ventures. Someone's handling my social media. Someone's producing my show. And someone's overseeing and managing my email and SMS list. That's a big ass business right there. And I would vouch. I would I would say that most likely, Aaron, most businesses have one, maybe two of those in play. Well, executing well, maybe one or two. When I, I see know, three well, and this four. When I see the score of three and four, I'm like, that they're killing it. Five, forget it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, the group that we were working with last week, we got them to put in two. They had zero. We got them to put in two. They all have to hire more people. Mm. They all, they're overwhelmed. So these things are injections of growth to the business. They are, they are, they're, it's new growth to the business. So good stuff there, man. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, authority marketing pillars, five we talked about. There were probably many more, but I think these five, if you box yourself into these five, um, th these can go a long way in getting you to where you want to go. I'm going to leave it there. That's Aaron. This is Andrew. If you want to see all of the past shows, head over to salesvelocitytv.com. If you watch us live 11 a.m. every Friday in the public Sales Velocity TV Facebook group. Everyone, this one's a wrap. We'll see you next week on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.